Okay, so uh, as Mike said, what we're going to look at today is the TT02 Torque Tool Tester from Mark 10. Um, this is kind of along the, the, the same lines of some other uh, torque and tension uh, tools that we've seen from Mark 10. Very easy tool to use. It's a portable tool, battery operated. You can take it out into the shop floor and do tool uh, torque tool setting, torque tool calibration, and uh, so forth right out there on the shop floor. You can also use it actually in your, let's say, in-house calibration lab. It does have a 0.3% of full scale accuracy. So it's, uh, it's perfectly fine for a lot of your torque tools. So I'm just going to dive right into this here. Uh, if we go back to our gauge cam here, this is the unit. You can see it right here. The menu functions are very similar to uh, other tools that we've used from Mark 10. I'm going to set this up as a go, no-go gauge. And uh, we can look here. We have our set points. We can come in here. We could set our, our upper limits, our, our lower limits. I can work my way down through the menu. I can set what, uh, what units uh, I want to work in. This happens to be set to Newton meters, but we can also do Newton centimeters, pound foot, ounce inches, pound inches. We have it set to Newton meters. We'll leave it there. And the other thing that you probably would most likely set is your brake detection. And there's some functions here that we'll get into in just one second, but brake detection is typically what you're going to use for a torque wrench. So. Let's back this back out, and we'll stay on our gauge cam here. Uh, there's several modes that this operates in. One is just the real-time mode. It's exactly what it sounds like. We see our display here. If I turn this, you'll see we are, uh, we're showing our torque in the display. But we're also showing, if you see that little arrow up there, it's pointing to the right, meaning we're turning clockwise. If I turn it the other way, there's our torque reading and telling us that we are counterclockwise. We also have a, um, a peak clockwise mode, which is exactly what that sounds like. It simply stores, it simply remembers and displays the highest value in that direction. And we have the same thing in peak counterclockwise. And then we have brake detection, which is really what I want to show you right now. Brake detection is simply uh, a way of storing and remembering the peak value just before the torque wrench slipped. Now I'm going to do this with a, an electric torque wrench. You can see that here. Before I use the electric torque wrench, I'm going to put a little damping device. If we were to use this torque wrench directly in here, because it's electric, it ramps up so fast that it might give us a false reading, uh, an inaccurate meeting on the TTO2. So this little spring kind of damps it down a little bit and gives it enough time to kind of propagate that torque through. So I'm simply going to zero this out, and I'm going to take a torque reading. And you can see, whoops, there we go. You can do that again. And you can see here our torque reading was 2.29 Newton meters. I can store that data. You can store up to 1,000 uh, readings in the TTO2. We'll zero it, and we can just do it again. There we go, 2.2 within the limits of this particular wrench. And that's using an electric torque wrench. Now, we can also do a go, no go. Uh, and we could do that in the brake mode that I'm showing here. I'm actually going to show you the, break, uh, the go, no go in the peak clockwise. I'm just going to zero that out. Now, with a go no go gauge, the uh, TTO2 will give you a visual representation of whether you are within the limits that you've already programmed in here. So, a little down arrow means we're below our lower limit. If I get a square in here, it means I'm within limits. And if I get an up arrow, it means I've gone above my upper limit. So, we'll just take this torque wrench and we'll. Okay, you see I got a little square box. I'm reading 1.2 Newton meters. This is actually uh, set for 1.2 meters, so we're well within spec. I can zero that out. We can just do that again to show you again. And we, so obviously, we are in spec on this, uh, on this tool. So that is a go, no-go gauge. Very easy to use, especially out on the shop floor. The last thing I want to show you is uh, even though you don't have to necessarily uh, use this with software. This works perfectly fine by itself. And, and actually, for torque tool setting and calibration, you would probably most likely always just use this by itself. But there is some software from Mark 10 called Measure Gauge. It's kind of uh, the software that they use for a variety of their um, for a variety of their products. I happen to be in it right now. We have got a screenshot, and let me make sure we're properly set up here. Now, one thing that you might do with this is you might simply use the digital display. And the digital display on this is simply a representation of what is already on the unit. So as I, as I make, oh, tell it to start, 
there we go, start acquiring data. And this is simply reflecting what I'm seeing on the display. So it gives you a nice big representation of, let me move my mouse center that there, there you go. So now we've got a nice big representation of what's going on. That might be convenient for maybe training purposes. We can also do some data acquisition. And the kind of the setup I like to do is we're going to set this up to start taking data when we've reached a, a threshold of, let's say, 0.5 Newton meters. We're going to stop taking data when we detect a break. And in our case, a break is when we've reached 49% of the maximum value. And we'll just go over to our data acquisition, and we will start that. And let me center our screen here. Now, I'm twisting the gauge, but nothing happens until I get at least 0.5 Newton meters. Now it starts collecting data, and it will collect data until it detects a break. So now it detected a break. We can see our peak right here. We can actually go in and delve into this data a little bit more. We have a little cursor. We could measure any point along the way we wanted. Doesn't make much sense maybe for this type of torque gauge. However, if you had a click type torque uh, torque gauge, you might want to see two peaks in order to see what's happening with that gauge. Uh, and of course this data can be exported and there's a certain amount of statistical analysis and so forth that you can do with it as well. So basically uh, this is the gauge in a nutshell. It uh, lists for $1,195, a little under $1,200 I believe. That's what it says on the Mark 10 website. It's the TTO2 Torque tool tester. Great shop floor tool. Uh, if you're doing a lot of tool setting uh, where you have to set your torque gauges out on the shop floor, uh, it's really well worth the investment. So once again, thanks to Mark 10 for sending that to us. And if you want to see uh, more on this, there is a link below the player page.